How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy, and as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons, and folks, we're breaking down a player today that is, in fact, on the trade block for the New York Mets, and is a player that I predicted to be on the trade block going back a couple months ago when we did our yearly off-season routine of five Mets who were not returned for the upcoming year, and my most controversial player I had in the video this time around back towards the end of 2023 was, in fact, the man in today's discussion, none other than Omar Narvaez. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure you do so after watching this. This one, the only player that returned to the Mets that I had in that video was, in fact, DJ Stewart. Everyone else has either been parted with or can still potentially be parted with. And now we have Omar Narvaez here in this mix. And this goes back to reporting from around a week ago, but it's been pretty much, I don't want to say brushed under the rug, but no one's really bad an eye to it. And I don't know why. It really hasn't been talked about much at all on YouTube. It hasn't been talked much at all on social media. And it's significant. I think the only reason why it hasn't been talked about too much is mainly because there's a lot of things going on in the offseason some of the Francisco Alvarez contract extension that he's looking for but again not a lot of people are talking about it because it's unrelated to say targeting a starting pitcher a free agent reliever or a bat whatever it may be but as you see here from these reports from the New York Post here over the past week from Greg Joyce and also Mike Puma Mets are open to trading catcher Omar Narvaez after Francisco Alvarez's emergence the Mets have indicated teams they are open to trade Narvaez the post Mike Puma reported Thursday which would give the veteran catcher at least a chance to play more free frequently than he would in Queens with Alvarez. Now, there are valid reasons as to why Narvaez can be dealt here, but in simple terms, this is another James McCann situation. It's a 2.0. You remember James McCann? Yeah, I know. It's hard to remember. The $40 million contract that went right down the drain before it even started? Yes, that same regime under Steve Cohen has now swung and missed twice on acquiring catchers in the Frasian market. James McCann, sayonara, you're out of here. Armand Narvaez made 8 mil in his first year, 7 mil this year when the guy is absolutely horrendous, what we've seen down below. And when I mean horrendous, again, he's not the worst player in the world, but I'm going to show the stat line here shortly. Omar Narvaez, even back from his injury, he left a lot to be desired. He's both a negative offensive and defensive player, which is exactly why Steve Cohen is willing to eat some money if it means you can part ways with him. Now, I don't expect a team to take on Narvaez's full contract, so again, would it have to be similar to James McCann an offseason ago where the Mets ate a portion and then part of ways with uh, McCann, who was a rental at that time, going to the Baltimore Orioles to be their backup for Adley Rutschman. Now we fast forward a year later, Omar Narvaez, as great of a veteran leadership aspect that he has as a fellow Venezuelan with someone like Francisco Alvarez, you can argue that the Mets really don't need him at his price point whatsoever. If the Mets are able to part ways with this contract and save a couple million, that couple million can be absolutely key for a Mets team that may very well be working a little bit on a budget now this offseason, knowing that they are leading all Major League Baseball in luxury tax. Yeah, you know that same tax that Manfred and everyone involved decided to use against Steve Cohen, even though the big bad Dodgers are the problem with spending yes that same tax it is correct the Mets have a lot of dead weight this season once we get to the offseason a lot of that money is going to be off the books which is great but not yet and because of that reason the Mets may be limited to an extent with the moves that they do as you see here Andy Martino over the past day stated that the Mets have basically 10 million to work with which could falter in their chances of landing say a JD Martinez or Justin Turner for the DH position then when asked a little bit more about that Andy replied by saying they are not totally closed off on adding a DH or infield or prices could come down. Again, there's been a lot of contradiction in the reporting we have seen this offseason. I'm going to expand on that greatly in tonight's live show, so make sure you guys check in around 8 p.m. Eastern going over all the latest news and rumors beyond just this report here about Omar Narvaez. But I want to know your reactions down below to this news because as we take a look at Omar Narvaez's numbers, again, they leave quite a bit to be desired and for good reason. You know, Narvaez again is not the worst player by any stretch, but in only 50 games with the Mets last year because he's out for quite a bit with injury after starting off the season nice in his first couple series with the team in April. You know, he was hitting against Miami well, was hitting against Brewers well, then he's hurt, then he comes back. Francisco Alvarez has won the starting job by then and then some. He's gained a limited sample size and when he was playing, he was not really being productive. There's a reason why the only highlight I have to show you in this video is him hitting one home run at City Field. Two home runs, seven RBIs, a 211, 283, 297 slash line, a 64 WRC plus, which means the average batter in baseball is at 100. He's at 64. That means He's right around, you know, 36% lower than the average batter in baseball. That is not good. And as long as I have my math correct, that that is in fact correct. If not, then there's a reason why I'm not a mathematician. I'm just talking here on YouTube. But 
Point is, Omar Narvaez, if you can part with him, this can change the landscape a little bit on what the Mets are willing to do this offseason. If they can shed that contract and say save, I don't know, two, three million dollars on it even, you're looking at a team that maybe was out of trying to acquire a short stopgap option for the DH position, could now be in further knowing that they have a couple more mil to work with. Again, I do not believe that the Mets have this flat rate as to what they're willing to spend. Andy did explain that this is a rough estimate, and again, this can be ever-changing, so so I'm not buying too much stock into it right now. But what I am buying into is the fact that the Mets, all offseason long, we knew would be operating more with a short-term mindset that we have learned because they're really focused on being competitive in 2024, but going all in for World Series aspirations in 2025 and beyond, given the type of free agent class that we're dealing with. And for many reasons, I understand. But one thing that I have a very hard time trying to grasp is the idea of rolling into the season without an external DH acquired and going with DJ Stewart and Mark Vientos instead. I see the appeal there, and I understand that this is probably the best year to do that, but having said that all, this team still has had a glaring hole in the DH position since it became universal, and it would do wonders to finally have a bona fide bat there every single day where you know where you're, what you're getting. Again, that might be too much to ask for us Mets fans at this rate, but we will expand on that more and then some in tonight's live show. My biggest takeaway, again, from the Mets being involved in, these, in the trade market for Omar Narvaez here is telling that this is another contract that unfortunately has soured. This is one of Billy Epler's worst moves. And the Frazier market at the time, I liked it. You know, basically any upgrade over James McCann, sign me up. But we're to the point now with Omar Narvaez, given the fact that he's making this amount of money just for the sake of making the money because Steve Cohen was throwing the bag like no tomorrow in the previous off seasons. We're seeing the negative impact, the implications it can have on the roster for the ensuing seasons going forward. Everyone and their mother knew that Omar Narvaez was going to opt into this deal after having a horrendous 2023 campaign. That's why he's making $7 million bucks in 2024. Does he deserve that money? No, he absolutely doesn't. But again, I'm not going to go on that tangent because if we're going to base it on what do guys deserve versus what they're getting, that is a huge argument for basically everyone in the game of baseball right now. But Omar Narvaez, while he can hit from the left side of the plate, while I think that there is still some potential upside with him should the Mets roll in to the season with him as backup catcher, which as of now is going to be the case, it is nice knowing, however, that the Mets are doing their due diligence of trying to part ways with the veteran catcher, give him an opportunity to play more so every day to help his stock to hit the free agent market uh, in the upcoming offseason from now for 2025 season, but also give the reins of Francisco Alvarez. He's going to be starting more often than not. The backup, could you maybe consider Tomas Nino? calling him up you know if there's one thing I will say as much as Tomas Nito's bat has been underwhelming he at least is a plus defender behind the plate and Omar Narvaez is both negatively offensively and defensively to the point where it was factoring into ball games for the Mets down the stretch as long as I recall correctly there were a lot of games where defensively I was scratching my head with Narvaez expecting more expecting better it's like as soon as he came back from that injury because he was out for a decent amount of time he just wasn't the same player or you know if you look through his numbers on fan graphs around the same walk percentage and K percentage, but still leaves a lot to be desired when you're hitting 211 with not even a 300 OBP and a 64 WRC plus. You know, a solid 0, 0.0 war. What else do I need to say? Omar Narvaez, if you can get him off this roster, take him somewhere where he gets a bigger opportunity. They eat a couple mil of that salary. Then you have a more unique aspect to this offseason to work with if you're David Stearns and everyone in this front office. So Mets fans, that is what I will leave you with. How do you feel about the Mets shopping Omar Narvaez this offseason? Do you think it's the right or wrong move? Who is the backup catcher in your eyes if they do, in fact, trade Narvaez? Do you want them to stick with, stay Tomas Nino, who's in AAA in Syracuse right now? Do you want them to go with one of the internal options that they acquired off waivers or via trade this offseason, like a Heinemann, for example? Wherever your thoughts are, drop them down below and stay tuned for a live show around 8 p.m. Eastern, as I mentioned, talking about not only this, but all the latest in Mets land, how there will be relievers signing very soon. David, Press, uh, David Stearns' presser with Harrison Bader and Luis Severino. What were the biggest takeaways from that will we find out any key info from that and then some as well will be breaking down so again thank you all so much for watching as always let's go Mets baby peace out